Hi XR developers, in this video we're going to look at the updated XR Hands package from Unity, which now allows us to create our custom hand gestures using the hand gesture debugger. Unity already offers us a variety of simple but frequently used hand gestures, such as pinch, point, grab, or poke. Unity offers us these hand gestures through the meta aim features. That means that we have to use meta devices. However, with the new hand detection, we can now create our custom hand poses that work across devices and allow us to create various unique and immersive gameplay without using controllers. Keep in mind that at the time of recording, we can only design static hand gestures, unlike Meta's hand pose detection that also lets us design gestures like swiping. If you like this type of content and you would like to see more, please take a second to like and subscribe to this channel. If you'd like to get the source code for each video, check out my Patreon. And if you have any questions, feel free to join our growing XR developer community on Discord. And now, let's jump into Unity. Like always, we start with a new project and switch over to the Android platform. I am using a project with the Universal Render Pipeline. Make sure the XR plugin management is installed, which allows us to use different XR providers. We then also install the OpenXR plugin and enable it for both Windows and Android. We then install the latest version of Unity's XR Interaction Toolkit. We can do that by either going to the Unity registry or adding it by its name. After that, we can finally install the XR Hands package. We need version 1.4 or newer, which is still in preview by the time of recording. So we will add the package by its name and specify the version. If you watch this video a few weeks after release, the package will have most likely been updated and you can just download it from the Unity registry. We then go to the Samples tab and import both gestures and hand visualizer samples. We need the hand visualizer to actually see a mesh of our hands. Let's now configure our settings to be able to later test our scene with hand tracking. It is important to add an interaction profile to the OpenXR settings, such as the Oculus Touch controllers, if you are using MetaQuest 2 or 3. Then you must check the hand tracking subsystem checkbox on both Android and Windows. Of course, for Android, we also check the MetaQuest support. For a more detailed setup, please watch my previous video about XR hands. Make sure to fix any other issues that still persist by going to the Project Validation tab and apply the recommended changes. We can then go ahead and open the hand gestures seen from the samples. If you are using the Universal Render Pipeline and see pink materials, just look for the materials folder and convert them by selecting them and going to Edit, then Rendering, then Materials. Now, this scene comes with a regular XR Origin setup that supports hand tracking, the debug UI seen on the screen, and lastly, a game object that contains the whole logic for detecting all the hand poses. When it comes to designing our own hand gestures, Unity has defined five so-called gesture building blocks that allow us to understand and create hand gestures more easily. Let's start with the first block called finger shapes. There are five different finger shapes and the debug UI lets us visualize them perfectly. We have the tip curl, which is the curve of the outer portions of the finger. Then we define a base curl, which is described as the angle between the hand and the base of the finger. A combination of base and tip curl is the full curl, which is the overall curve of a finger. Furthermore, we have a pinch shape, which checks whether the finger is in a pinching posture, based on how close the tip of the finger is to the tip of the thumb. Lastly, there is the spread shape, which is the spread between this finger and the next, moving from thumb to little finger. Let's test our scene to see how the values change in action. This debugger is a really brilliant tool that allows us to move each finger individually and observe how the values of each finger shape change, which is crucial for later when we design our own gestures, so we don't have to do any guesswork and a bunch of trial and error. Before we do that, however, let's quickly look at the second gesture building block, which is the orientation. As we will see later, there is two ways we can check for a condition. One is to look at the hand relative to the user, and another one would be to look at the hand orientation relative to a target. We will take a closer look into this in a minute. Now, if we open the gesture detection, we have a right and a left gesture detection. Both work exactly in the same way. Let's look at the thumbs up gesture, which is going to reveal a third gesture building block to us namely the static hand gesture component. We first reference a XR hand tracking events script, which will provide us with all the updated joint data 
to be used for gesture detection. We can either use the one that is already on our XR origin on our left and right hand, or we can add a new one wherever we want. Important will be to specify if you want to detect the left or right hand events. After that, we can reference either a hand pose or a hand shape. The difference is that with a hand shape, the gesture is recognized no matter how the user's hand is oriented, assuming the finger shape conditions all pass. With a hand pose, you can specify that the hand must also be oriented in a specific way relative to the user. We will look closer into this in a second. Next, we could reference a target if we want to specify if the hand should point towards a specific object. We can see this on the point at this hand gesture, which will only be performed if we actually point towards the element that is assigned in the inspector. Very importantly, we have two events for performing an action when the gesture was performed or has ended. In this scene, we simply show or hide a blue color behind the gesture that was detected. Lastly, we can define the minimum amount of time the hand must be held in the required shape and orientation for the gesture to be performed and the interval at which the gesture detection is performed. Let's finally look at what such a hand pose is composed of, which is our fourth building block. A hand pose consists of a hand shape, which is the fifth and last building block, and some orientation conditions. We have user conditions and target conditions. As previously mentioned, we can look at the position of the hand relative to either of these transforms. The configuration is mainly the same except the reference direction, which we will get to in a second. Now, first we define the hand axis, which can be the finger's extended direction, the thumb extended direction, or the palm direction. We then decide if our hand aligns with, is perpendicular to, or opposite to our reference direction. Now finally, this is where you decide if it is relative to yourself, or in other words, the XR origin, or relative to another target that we can define in the inspector as we saw before, on the point at this hand gesture. Now, the basis of every hand pose and every hand gesture is the hand shape. So let's look at the thumb up hand shape. To define our own hand shape, we can define the shape of some or all our fingers and define which shape they are supposed to be in and with what tolerance they should be detected. In this case, the thumb shape should be a full curl, which at first might be confusing. However, if we look further down, the desired value is zero which means basically the thumb should not be in a full curl at all, or in other words, it should be extended. We can assign some tolerance to make the detection more flexible and also detect if our gesture is maybe not performed perfectly. Additionally, the thumb should be completely spread apart from its next finger, which is the index finger. For the rest of the fingers, we can see that they are all supposed to be in a complete full curl, which basically means that we close all these fingers into a fist. To recap, we go back to our thumbs up gesture in our scene and look at the static hand gesture component. Unity has used a hand pose to detect the thumbs up gesture, which means not only the thumb signal hand shape must be correct, but additionally, the orientation conditions have to be met. Now, if we don't really mind in which direction our hand is pointing, we don't need to use a hand pose at all and can directly assign the hand shape to the static hand gesture component. If we now test the scene, you can see that no matter in which direction we hold our thumb, the gesture performed event will be called. Amazing guys, I think we now understand the concept of hand gestures, hand poses, and hand shapes, and are finally ready to create our custom hand gesture. Let's create a new hand gestures folder, or take any folder of your choice, then right click into your project and go to create, then XR, then hand interactions, and then hand shape. We will call this OK Hand Shape. For creating a new gesture, Unity has already added an additional game object for us, which we can simply enable and then reference our hand shape to. Now, when we press on play, we can figure out in real time which fingers have to be in which shape to achieve the gesture we are looking for. I think for the index finger, we definitely need a strong pinch. We set the desired value to one and give it some tolerance. Then, at least for the middle and the ring finger, we want the opposite of a full curl, which means they should be extended. So we select full curl for both and set the desired value to zero, but give it a tolerance as well, because our hand is not always perfectly tracked or our fingers are slightly moving. We can easily adjust these settings while our editor is in play mode 
and the changes will be saved once we stop the game. Perfect guys. We just created our own hand shape. And as we can see, we can already detect our gesture perfectly. Now, to make this tutorial complete, let's also create a hand pose to take our hands orientation into account. Click into your project and go to Create, then XR, then Hand Interactions, and then Hand Pose. Let's just call our new hand pose OK. We firstly assign our hand shape, which we created a minute ago, and then we add a user condition, since I would like to look at the hand orientation relative to my XR origin. Since our thumb or other fingers aren't really extended in a specific direction, I would like to set the hand axis to palm direction. Next, our palm shouldn't be aligned, but rather perpendicular to our head, or in other words, sideways, and not straight pointing at or away of us, which would be a very unnatural movement. So, as the reference direction, we select hand to head. We lastly adjust the angle tolerance to 60. And with that, let's assign our new hand pose on our static hand gesture component and press play. Excellent. As we can see now, we can hold our hand in the desired shape, but it will only detect our hand gesture if also all the conditions of our hand pose have been met. By the way, you can use the exact same hand shape and hand pose for both the left and right hand. Adding custom gestures helps you create input methods that feel true to your storyline and context, adding to the immersiveness. Based on your audience, you can create custom gestures to make interactions feel more comfortable. Alright guys, and that's it for this video. I hope you learned a lot, and as you can see, it is now super easy to create our own hand gestures with Unity's new XR Hands package. I can't wait to see what you're building with it. And again, if you'd like to support me, please leave a like or subscribe, check out my Patreon, or join our XR developer community on Discord. Thank you so much for watching, and see you in the next one.